The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew Jesus said to His disciples, If your brother should commit some wrong against you, go and point out his fault, but keep it between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. If he does not listen, however, summon another, so that every case may stand on the word of two or three witnesses. If he ignores them, refer it to the church. If he ignores even the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. I assure you, whatever you declare bound on earth shall be held bound in heaven, and whatever you declare loosed on earth shall be held loosed in heaven. Again I tell you, if two of you join your voices on earth to pray for anything whatever, it shall be granted you by my Father in heaven. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel passage for this Sunday is taken from the 18th chapter of St. Matthew. We have been reflecting on our Christian responsibility for our brothers and sisters out of love. And this is a mark of a true Christian community where brothers and sisters are responsible for each other, desiring only what is good for one another. In the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, this responsibility towards the brother or sister is manifested in a particular action. God tells Ezekiel that if a brother or sister is doing wicked things, then a responsible prophet must dissuade the person from pursuing an evil path. If the prophet keeps quiet, if the prophet pretends that everything is all right, if the prophet, out of fear or out of false respect, does not call the attention of an erring brother or sister, then the prophet, the prophet, the irresponsible prophet, will be held liable for the death of the other person. So you see, God desires that we look after each other, especially when we err, when we take the wrong path, Brothers or sisters must come to the rescue, must remind us, must dissuade us. And the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans brings us to the root of all of this, this responsibility for brothers or sisters. Plainly, love. The fulfillment of the law. If you love, you will not do anything that will harm your brother or sister. If you love, you will take the risk of reminding a brother or sister that what he or she is engaging in may not be pleasing to God. So the motivation is only love, love. And the person who loves will just do anything, even be willing to lose anything in order to save a brother or a sister. I'm sure you parents, you married people, you know, when you love someone, you know, I know parents, you know, when, they, the, when their children are sick, one of their children uh, is sick, they're even willing. You know, they say, let me uh, assume the sickness. Please save this child. You know, out of love. You, know, you want the good of the, of the other person. Now, the gospel. The gospel points to a situation of conflict between two persons. Jesus gives us very clear instructions on how to exercise our responsibility for the welfare of a brother or sister who has wronged us. Hmm? Look at this. A brother or sister has wronged us. 
some of you will say, well, he is at fault. I don't feel any sense of responsibility towards him or her. No? Let him go his merry way. I have nothing to do with him. He has already hurt me. Ah, no, no. That's not the Christian response. Jesus says, if a brother or sister hurts you, has done you wrong, it is your responsibility to go to that person. Wow, huh? You take the initiative. Go to the person, point out his mistake in the hope that that person might reform. You might win over the person to the good path. But when you correct the person, when you make the person aware of something wrong that he or she had done, do it privately, just between the two of you. So, you do not want to destroy the reputation of the person. You want to make the person experience the love that is pure, pure because it comes from someone who is hurting, someone who has been maligned probably, someone who has been mistreated, yet, yet, love is stronger. But love, if it is true, is patient. If the person being corrected does not listen, according to Jesus, do not give up. Do not give up. Bring two or three witnesses so that on the strength of the presence of two or three witnesses, brothers and sisters who also care, maybe this person will listen. Okay, so don't give up. Do not say, I've tried it once. If he doesn't want to listen, okay, I give up. No. Our responsibility for our brother or sister is also persistent. It, if it is love, then it is persevering and patient. Now, what if the person is stubborn, doesn't want to listen to you and to the two or three other persons that came with you? Then that's the time you bring this person before the assembly, the church, the Christian community. And we hope he or she listens. But if not, then that's the time. That's the time when he or she would be treated like someone who had separated himself or herself from the community. Mind you, you are not the one driving the person away from the community. By his or her stubbornness, he or she was the one who had separated himself herself from the community. The community will do what it could to keep the person within its fold and within God's graciousness. Oh, brothers and sisters, do we exercise our responsibility for each other this way? Do we give up so easily? Are we the ones driving people away from our families and from our community? Or are we the persistent lover that will do his or her best in order to lead a brother or sister back to God? And maybe when we have heard with distress the no from our brother or sister, we still have something to do pray. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. So it is not just individuals praying. It is Jesus praying in the community, praying to the Father. And according to Jesus, whatever you ask of the Father, when it is the prayer of the community of love, the Father will grant it. So, our responsibility does not end. We continue praying, and in God's time, hopefully, the person will realize how much we love him, 
will realize that it is our love that has been inviting him to return to God. And then we realize it is not really us. It is Jesus in us praying to the Father for the good of our brother or sister. Let us be responsible for each other. Let that be motivated by love, which will make us patient, persevering, and prayerful. You know, uh, we priests, and I guess all of you, have had experiences of exercising responsibility for the neighbor. Like uh, when we experienced the earthquake in uh, Bohol, oh, many people helped the victims and the survivors. After that uh, horrendous typhoon, Yolanda, not only the Filipinos, but the whole world, we became one big universal brotherhood, fraternity, where we exercise responsibility for each other. And now I know we are praying for our brothers and sisters in areas that are experiencing violence, distress. And we pray, we are really praying that those who have made wrong decisions affecting the lives of others might see the light. Let us not stop praying. Let us not give up on our brothers and sisters. But I think you also share this sentiment of mine. While it feels good to exercise responsibility for others through relief goods, through uh, sending some donations, money, etc., it feels totally different when you're able to guide a brother or sister from, the, from a wrong path to the right path. You know, I've been, uh, I was a seminary rector for many, many years, and part of my role is to call the attention of seminarians <laughs> regarding their behavior. But before approaching them, I already grieve. I know they will not talk to me for a number of, of days. I know that that reminder will not always be received as a loving reminder. But you know, you, I, I would do it. I would do it and even bear sometimes the, the, the cold treatment that follows it. But what a consolation. Sometimes... After two years, three years, 12 years, someone would call you and say, Father, I realize that your reminder to me was what I needed. And I want to assure you, I keep it in mind. If I'm tr trying to be a better priest or seminarian now, it's partly because of your reminder. Oh, you feel good and you know even if it does not land on the front pages of the newspapers, you know you have been a brother. You know you have exercised your responsibility. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.